everyone good morning and uh, thank you for being back on my channel and my apologies for not having uploaded any content in the last few months I've been very busy with other stuff I have to say uh, I have worked a lot of my on my uh, classic cars I've completely rebuilt an old Renault 4 CV from 1954 and I had to do an engine rebuild a complete engine rebuild on my Alpine A310 uh, I will tell you more in a later video about that uh, it was a kind of an unfortunate situation but um, in the end I think it came out all right we are back today in the all-electric Renault Zoe and um, we are driving as you might expect on a beautiful beautiful mountain road we are going up over our pass So as you can see here, we are reaching the top of uh, the overall pass and uh, you can see a very surprising thing over there. It's actually a lighthouse. So as you can see, there's a bit of a surreal scenery going on up here on the overall pass. We are here, as you can read on the sign uh, behind the car there, on 2046 meters above sea level. And in the background, you can see uh, a lighthouse, a working lighthouse. Um, with no sea or any lakes inside here so uh, that has a particular reason as we are standing here at the very source of the river Rhine which uh, runs all the way from here to uh, Rotterdam in the Netherlands so this lighthouse you can see over here is uh, the exact copy of uh, the lighthouse that stands in Hoek van Holland in Rotterdam where the Rhine actually goes uh, into, uh, into the sea. So that's the story behind uh, this lighthouse here. So here's another interesting thing. Have you ever seen a train station, a railway station at uh, 2000 meters above sea level? Well, here it is. Uh, it's uh, the station of the Oberal Pass. See the lake here in the background. And uh, this is a small gauge train running between uh, the Grisons. Uh, in this case, it's uh, Dizentis and uh, Andermatt in the canton of Uri. So look at this beautiful scenery. We have a red light here at 2000 meters above sea level. No problem, that will give us a bit of time to enjoy here the whole scenery. It's beautiful, isn't it? And there's the train station again. And you can see the lighthouse from the source of the River Rhine, the exact copy of the one in uh, Rotterdam. So here you can enjoy a bit of uh, point of view driving, uh, going down the other side of uh, the Oberal Pass. Uh, you can see the Orzerental in the background, that's the valley down there. Well, you can't really see it now as we turn in here. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful summer's day. It's uh, very hot down in the valley, but it's a nice, it's only 12 degrees up here, whereas down in the valley would be well over 20 degrees. So you can see here a lot of uh, bicycles coming up the pass, which is very popular here in Switzerland. And now you can see the Orserental in the, in the background there. Um, here underneath where we are now uh, runs the Gotthard Tunnel which uh, connects north and south in Europe. It's one of the longest uh, tunnels in the world. It's the longest uh, railway, tu railway tunnel in the world anyway, but it's one of the longest uh, road tunnels as well. And it runs all through the Alps here underneath where we are. So down here we reach the village of uh, Andermatt in uh, the Swiss Alp. It's a very remote village, uh, kind of out in the nowhere up here in this valley. In winter time it's uh, kind of a popular ski station. There has been uh, big investments in uh, hotels by an Egyptian businessman 
Sami Saviris. He built a huge hotel here in Andermatt. Other than that, uh, it's a lovely little village. There's not much going on here, but uh, it's uh, nice for skiing in winter. And uh, I guess it's a stopover point here on the way from uh, north to south, uh, but also east uh, to west. Uh, depending on which passes uh, you want to drive. So I might stop here for coffee and uh, then we will go on through the um, Schellenenschlucht, which is a gorge um, uh, further on and uh, we'll see how we get on there. i leave the camera on for a moment so you can enjoy here the scenery, the village as we drive in. It's a very typical Swiss uh, mountain village, uh, living mainly from tourism, I would say. So as you can see here, we're driving through the Schellenenschlucht, very nice tunnel here, it's very rough, uh, rocky uh, scenery. Uh, there is a lot of history of Switzerland involved with this part here. Um, Switzerland was always a country of uh, transit, of transport between north and south, east and west. This is a funny announcement here from the car. Uh, we are regenerating a lot when uh, driving downwards here on the pass and the car actually thinks that we have found a new charging station that it's not in the system and it asks us if we want to add it to the map in the system. That's uh, very funny, but uh, that's the way it is when driving down with an electric car, you actually get the energy back. So here we have a Dutch, uh, I think they're not used to the mountain roads as uh, it's all flat in the Netherlands, so uh, I think we better overtake him, which is no problem with the electric Renault Zoe as we have a lot of uh, power uh, from also from low speeds, uh, as you can see that goes like uh, butter, so no problem at all and we are back on the road which is uh, huge fun in the Renault Zoe with the big torque at every speed. So mountain passes are the nicest thing to drive with uh, the all-electric Renault Zoe. Spectacular, isn't it? Here we are at about 2,220 meters on top of the Susten Pass. Uh, the scenery is just spectacular, the car is down there, as you can see, but look at the Alps in the background, 
it's just beautiful it's amazing look at that it's so nice and the road is beautiful all look here on Aston Martin great stuff UK number plates So to wrap this up, I'm pretty sure you enjoyed uh, the drive over Oberal Pass and the Susten Pass nearly as much as I did on this beautiful summer's day and uh, I think there's really only one thing left to say and that's uh, Yahoo! So please stay tuned, uh, check back again and uh, have a good time, bye!